Isabella Romeo Melody is a PhD student at Aston University um, and she's in uh, her final year and a member of the microbiology research team at that university. Her interests include antimicrobial testing, the prevention of biofilm formation and treatment of biofilm infections. Her current research is focused on the efficacy of XF73 against clinically relevant gram positive and gram negative microorganisms. Bella, over to you. Thank you. Uh... As you know, my name is Isabella, and this is an area of my research looking at the efficacy of XF73 against gram-positive microorganisms. So to start off with, uh, a brief introduction to the issue that we're currently trying to tackle, and I want to focus on healthcare-associated infections. These are infections that a patient did not previously have before admission to the hospital and what they pick up while they are currently an, in their stay. While it only affects roughly about 6% of hospitalised patients, you can see that this actually leads to the NHS and increased pressure on them and costs roughly nearly 3 billion a year and almost 30,000 deaths. In particular, I want to focus on vancomycin-resistant ent enterococci. These are one of the main causes of healthcare-associated infections, and they cause a particular problem for immunocompromised patients. This is because current treatment strategies include a cocktail and a multitude of antimicrobials to treat the infections, but this leads to the damage of a healthy gut microbiota, which leads then to these immunocompromised patients to have further difficulties along the way. Staphylococcus aureus is also one of the most commonly isolated bacteria, which is found in wound infections. These can be ulcers on a patient from being prolonged uh, stay in beds or following, uh, following surgeries. So these could be the infection sites where the patient has been cut open. Now, originally, it was believed that bacteria were known to be planktonic, free-floating microorganisms in an environment. But as studies have gone on, we found that actually this might not be the case and bacteria prefer to be in a biofilm. Now, this is a community of microorganisms that live together and they secrete an extracellular polymer matrix, which offers this increased level of protection and resistance to the environment, as well as offering more structure and stability. This matrix then makes it much more difficult for these infections to be treated, and it takes roughly 100 times the concentration of current antimicrobials to treat these biofilm infections. In my work, I currently am funded by Destiny Pharma, and I work with XF73, which is the leading compound of the XF series, currently in clinical trials in both the UK and the USA. It is a synthetic dicationic porphyrin derivative, offering a novel mechanism of action as a membrane disruptor, leading to potassium and ATP leakage from the cell, but interestingly does not lead to the leakage of said cells. It's highly effective against gram-positive bacteria, including methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, and the aim of this compound is to be developed as a topical agent for treating the nasal carriage of Staphylococcus aureus infections, as 80% of these infections are actually from a patient themselves, where the staph infection in their nose is then spread to their body while they are hospitalized. So the project aim for this area of research was to really investigate the effect of XF73 against two antimicrobials. So I selected Staphylococcus aureus and Enterococcus vocalis and decided to try and create this in a biofilm mode of growth. My objectives were to conduct minimum biofilm inhibition and minimum biofilm eradication concentrations against these gram-positive biofilms using obviously XF73, but I also added the addition of comparators. So these are known antimicrobials that can be used to treat these infections as I really wanted to see how XF73 would range in comparison to known treatment strategies. An additional level of analysis is a crystal violet staining of the Enterococcus faecalis biofilms to really visualize and see what's going on during these treatments. Now to start off with, I had to set up a biofilm formation. This occurs during the using a Calgary device which is a modified version of a 96 well microtiter plate. The reason where it becomes different is that we have these pegs in the lid of the microtiter plate that can be then immersed into the wells, which has the starting inoculum of either uh, as either microbial. And this is then left to incubate overnight for the biofilms to form. 
Following the formation, we get these lovely little biofilms that grow on the pegs, and it makes it much easier to transfer into additional microtiter plates, which offer the treatment. Now, my treatments were the XF73, gentamicin, mepiracin, and rifampicin, and I ran a concentration range in order to really generate what the MBIC and the MBEC was from 0.125 to 512 micrograms per mil. These were immersed in the environment and then left for a further 24 hours. Following the biofilm treatment, these treated biofilms were then set up for the analysis part of the study. So my minimum biofilm inhibition concentration was when the biofilms were then immersed once again in Muller-Hinton broth and checked and left to grow overnight to see if the biofilms were viable anymore. And an MBIC was classified as the lowest recorded concentration that the antimicrobial was capable of inhibiting growth. Now, inhibition of growth was then further classified as any of the wells that were clear and weren't cloudy, so you could determine that there was no growth present. Although this is unable to determine whether it's inhibited, inhibited or eradicated. So an additional study was taking these clear wells that we showed no growth so far and plating them up into Muller-Hinton agar to check and see what if it was able to grow or not once removed from the environment. And the minimum biofilm eradication concentration was classified as the lowest concentration of the antimicrobial leading to no growth on these agar plates. So here's a collection of my results. Uh, I had to add a DMSO control as mupiracin and rifampicin were grown up in DMSO. So I wanted to make sure that the DMSO itself was not affecting the results generated. And as you can see here, XF73 was by far the most effective antimicrobial in eradicating these biofilms. From the comparators, gentamicin was then the only comparator capable of eradicating both my gram-positive microorganisms, but at concentrations, at concentrations that were higher than the XF73. Rifampicin was also capable of eradicating the Staph aureus biofilms, but at 16 times higher the concentration required. And in comparison, it, it took much higher concentrations, actually the highest concentration I tested to inhibit the Enterococcus faecalis biofilms, but sadly it did not lead to eradication. And finally, we see mepiracin, where even the highest concentration tested was neither able to inhibit or eradicate the biofilm growth. I have some nice little images here, which is the crystal violet staining of the biofilms. So following the treatment of the biofilms before, uh, instead of setting them up in broth to do the MBIX or MBEX, I immerse them in crystal violet. Now the crystal violet is capable of staining both the extracellular polymer matrix, polymer matrix as well as the microorganisms themselves. Now the darker the purple coloration is the more biofilm that is present on the pegs. As you can see from XF73 which is the top left I had to use a much lower concentration range in comparison to the other comparators in order to actually visualize and see what was happening but what I found which was quite interesting is that this is a immediate effect of the antimicrobial treatment, which is usually not noticed when you do standard and traditional MBIC and MBEX. So what we're seeing here is actually all of the antimicrobials were capable of decreasing the biofilm load physically on the pegs, but that is not then showed when we do the MBIC and MBIC testing as for the comparators, in particular mepiracin, it was not enough to actually inhibit the growth overall. So to conclude, XF73, I decided, was the most effective antimicrobial tested due to its low MBIC and MBEC values. XF73, therefore, has the potential to be an effective antimicrobial treatment against the Enterococcus faecalis and the Staph aureus biofilm infections. This lead into then my future work where I'd like to test XF73 against a range of more gram-positive microorganisms and potentially older microorganisms in biofilm mode of growth to create a more realistic uh, infection system that we would see in a hospital environment. I'd like to thank my supervisors, Dr. Tony Worthington and Professor Pete Lambert, as well as my funders, Destiny Pharma, and last but not least, Aston University, in particular, uh, Lab 327. Uh, thank you for your time.